Canada originally, but I've lived in the UK for 20 years. I know that's the standard response to hello. <laughs> Stare at me till I fucking cry. <laughs> I mean, I've learned a lot since I moved here. When I first came here, I used to smile. <laughs> I love your country, quite frankly, it's because things don't work here and you guys don't seem to care. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do on Sunday, go down to a train station and watch foreigners who've just arrived in the country with a train ticket being ushered onto a bus. <laughs> great because they think they're going to see a train. I mean, we know they're not. It's the only country in the world that does that, where you can go up to a counter and buy a ticket to a mode of transportation, and they don't tell you that you're never going to see that fucking mode of transportation. They don't even, they hand you the ticket. And we know, like I know, you know if you've got a train ticket on Sunday that you're not going to see a fucking train. Or if you do, you're going to see 12 of them, right? and you're gonna have to take them all, and it's gonna take seven, it's fucking horrible. And it's, what, but for, from a funny point of view, watching a foreigner's reaction the first time is great. Because you can see, initially they kind of look at the, the train ticket, then they kind of look behind them to make sure they're at the train station. And they look at the staff member and go, but I have a train ticket. Get on the bus. <laughs> It's even funnier when they get angry. This is an outrage. How dare you put me on a bus? I have a train ticket. I want to speak to your manager. You just missed your bus. <laughs> I've taken the train in today for these gigs. I've had a few in London, which is nice. I don't like driving after 11. That's the problem. It's because they shut every fucking road in this country <laughs> down after 11. And they do it to all of us. And you know what I'm talking about. You've driven after 11. You just want to get home. You just want to get home. And it starts. You're on the motorway. You're going fucking 70, maybe 75. It's going well. Then you look up and you see that little T. Right? Oh, fuck, a lane's closing. All right, I'll just move over here. Speed limit 60. And you go up and you see another T. And you go, okay, fuck, I've still got three lanes, and now it's 50. And then you go, fuck, I know what's coming. <laughs> and you get funneled off. It's like they bought too many blinky cones, and they have to fucking use them. They don't work on the fucking roads. I've never fucking see the cunts working on the roads, ever. You know why? They put out so many fucking blinky cones, by the time they get them out, they gotta bring them back in for the morning. So you get funneled off into some fucking shitty B road in the middle of fucking nowhere, heading to a town following shapes. Can you explain to the foreigner what the fuck the shapes are all about? I'm following a triangle, a square, and a circle. What is this, fucking Sesame Street for fuck's sake? And then I come to a roundabout. And the circle goes to the left, the triangle goes straight, and the square goes to the right. I don't know what fucking shape I am. I've gone from 20 miles per hour on the motorway, now I'm fucking in some weird road. Like some odd road in some posh cunt town where they, they don't widen the roads. They haven't widened them since horse and buggies, because fuck it, they're, they're too posh and they're too upset that the car came, so fuck it. They're gonna make normal people ride on a road so fucking thin, like fucking, and you've got this foliage above you, like, like 16 feet high, I think it's corn. I don't even know what the fuck it is. And you're driving along going, holy fuck, if I meet somebody going this way, that's it. I'm stuck for the night. So they cut that little half circle into the foliage, right? You ever seen those motherfuckers? Like, that's going to help? Because you always meet sudden... You ever, you ever drive up and see some cunt and you go, fuck, should I go for the half circle? No, they will go for the half circle, right? Because they're closer. And then you see them drive by the half circle and you're like, well, now we're fucked! <laughs> I don't 
don't even understand the logic to them. I know this is a bitch session, but I'm gonna get this fucking out. <laughs> like, what do they do? Okay, we got a fucking pothole on the A3. What should we do? Fucking close it. <laughs> you get those fucking cones out here right now. <laughs> what, you wanna close it? Yeah, fucking both ways. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Came over here uh, 20 years ago, I met my future ex-wife. <laughs> I got two kids, you know. I know everybody likes fucking babies and shit. I fucking, they're so boring. <laughs> nobody ever says that to you. Like nobody, everybody, oh, isn't that fucking great? No. Not really. They're a bit fucking boring. They're annoying. They don't sleep. They're a fucking pain in the ass for the first couple of days. And my first, one was born with colic and acid reflux. If you don't know what that is, it meant he cried from every moment we brought him home all the fucking time, right? It's hard to like that. I mean, I know every episode of Peppa Pig. I fucking hate Peppa Pig. You know why I'll never go vegan? Because when I'm eating bacon, I think I'm eating that little cunt. And I fucking love it. It was cry, right? And I'll never forget, we were a year into this. I went uh, no sleep for that whole fucking year. You people don't realize it. Any single person here with no kids, if you say you're tired, no, you fucking aren't. <laughs> You've never been fucking tired in your fucking life, all right? Have a kid and talk to me about tired. And I fucking hate you when you do that. I was coming back from Toronto here. I saw some woman with a fucking toddler who was screaming and crying. And you could see this single guy look over and go, Oh, there goes my nap. And I just like looked at him. I was like, fuck you, you prick. And he looked at me. I'm like, you know what? You get on that plane and try a nap. But when you do, I'm going to shove my cock in your mouth. <laughs> this woman hasn't slept for a year. You better, I can't have a nap. Well, see if you can nap now, because I'm willing to go to prison to put that fucking dick in your mouth. So you sleep well, and I hope you snore with your mouth open because you're gonna choke on my fucking sausage four hours into this flight, dickhead. <laughs> We're in the shop, I'm holding William. I think he was teething that week, so I actually hadn't slept in seven, seven days, right? So I'm holding William and I'm fucking, I'm in a dazed state, just staring forward. He's screaming and crying. My wife's talking to the salesperson, I can see, the single people looking at me as if to say, why aren't you doing anything? And I'm like, well, fuck, because we've tried everything. You don't think we've tried everything? You don't think you don't like it when I hit them? <laughs> and I can tell you when you're not around, it works really fucking well, all right? <laughs> so I'm holding them, right? screaming and crying. I could see this granola eating couple of cunts to my left and I, I knew they were gonna come over and get involved, right? Because nobody minds their own fucking business anymore. I'm old, I'm from a time when people minded their own fucking business, but everybody nowadays has to get fucking involved in your life, right? So the couple's now standing in front of me, William's screaming and crying and the woman looks at me and I kind of come to her and she goes, he's not happy, is he? I said, no, he's crying. She goes, you know what we like to do with our children? I went, no, but I know you're going to tell me, so go ahead. She goes, we like to find out our children's likes and dislikes and only do what they like. <laughs> you know what he loves? He loves watching me kick the fuck out of a stranger. <laughs> Fucking time, man. I got a fucking 15 year old turning 16. Anyone got a teenage son or daughter in here? Aren't they fucking fun, eh? Just living with a confident dickhead. That's what a teenager is, really confident. You can't help them though, you say anything, you're a fucking dickhead, right? So you gotta just watch them be a dickhead. It's just like, so fucking difficult, because I can see so, and I know why. I thought back to when I was 15, and every guy knows this. When you're 15, you have an erection 90% of the day. You can't get rid of it. It's not even sexual. Wind can catch it on a weird angle. 
you can't get it down. It's not like, you remember the 15-year-old erection touching your belly button? There's no getting that fucker down. Uh, no fucking way, it's up. You gotta jerk off a lot when you're 15. I know that, I fucking know that. Every guy knows that, because you've all had that day when you were a kid and you thought, I wonder how many fucking times I can do it. <laughs> Yeah, you got the house to yourself, you got a good towel. <laughs> 13. <laughs> yeah, the only reason I did 13 is because I didn't want to do it a dozen times. Because the 13th hurt. <laughs> you fucking like it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> It brought me back to the first time. I went to a massage parlor when I was 15. I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I didn't know, and this is before the internet, I'm really old, so I did. I grew up on a farm, but I played ice hockey. I wanted to play pro. So we were going on a tournament. I'm 15 years old. I get on the bus. My back's sore. I didn't want to tell the coach because he would have benched me, right? So we check into the motel, and I see massage flashing across the street, right? <laughs> now, me and my virgin ass, stupid, dumb, I just, I'm so naive, I just went, well, fuck me, I'm gonna get my back worked on by this doctor. <laughs> I waited till everyone was asleep, ran across to the, didn't even think, why is it open at 11 at night? <laughs> went in, said, uh, my back sore. She didn't even look up to the counter, she just went, go in the room, take off your clothes, put on a towel and wait. I was like, okay. Went in the room, put on the towel, the towel touched the head of my cock, now I was hard. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, and I can't get it down, and I'm thinking, my God, the doctor's going to come through, and I'm going to be really embarrassed. So I wrapped the towel really tight around me, like this, and I stood like this. The doctor walked in, wearing high heels and a thong. <laughs> And this is how naive I was. I was like, man, this doctor is beautiful. <laughs> Lie to my stomach. She worked on my back with hot oil. Now, I've never had a woman touch me at this point in my life, basically, right? It was like a magic act. She's rubbing my back, and I was like, mm. <laughs> And then she goes, flip over. And I went, what? She goes, flip over. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, flip over and we'll finish. And I was really nervous about, because I still thought this was legitimate. So I flipped over thinking I'm gonna have to explain the erection. She immediately reaches underneath, grabs my cock and goes like this. And I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> you know what? Snap my back back into place. <laughs> I remember thinking this must be that new shiatsu they're talking about. It's so funny because you want to laugh sometimes, but then you think I'm disgusting sometimes. You're sort, of, you're sort of in between. You're like, I want to laugh at that, but no. Your friend's laughing harder. She's the one we... Anyway. I smoke a lot of weed in my life. I've always been a fucking druggie. I did it all ecstasy. Oh, wait a minute, are there any uh, cops? Here. There's always one hiding. You're never around when we need you, getting robbed in the park. None of you are around. As soon as I do a line, there you are. A lot of weed. I just, it started early. It started with hash, actually, and then it graduated to weed. I'll never forget, it really took over in college. I went to college. I was always someone who never went to class. I always used to get drunk and high. And, I'm, and try to do the exam. I'd study the night before and try to learn the whole year and then do it. So I was, I was talking to my friend. I was leaving. We had this really important end of year exam. I was talking to my friend Grenville. And uh, I said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to pass this course. He's like, all right, I got you, man, go. So I was about to leave, and just then this girl walked in that I had a crush on for like a year, and I was too shy to go up and talk to her. So she comes up to me, I'll never forget this, and she goes, hi, Sean. I said, hi. She goes, I've had a crush on you for the past year, and I said, no way, me too. She goes, yeah, but I'm moving to Europe tomorrow, and I'll never see you again, so I'd like to sleep with you tonight as a going away gift. <laughs> so I had a choice as a man. I could sleep with her and not study, or 
well, fuck, I could take the course next year. It didn't really matter at this point, right? <laughs> so we went back to our dorm room and fucked. Sorry, I made love. And then uh, <laughs> it went, went back, back to the... I got up at 8, the exam was at 9, I ran there. I found my friend Grenville outside the exam room and I grabbed the textbook. And I tried to learn it all in 30 minutes. <laughs> it's still fucking hungover, smelling of sex. I love that fucking smell. Because everyone knows it. You're all going, oh, look at him, he smells of sex. <laughs> yeah, and you don't. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn. He looks at me and he goes, you didn't study at all. And I said, no. He goes, well, do you want to smoke a joint? Yes, I do. Because <laughs> if I'm going to fail something miserably, I'm going to giggle through the whole fucking experience. <laughs> I wrote the exam stoned and I got a 96. <laughs> so I figured, why not get stoned for every exam from then on? I must have bought a different batch of weed. Because <laughs> I was sitting at the next exam for about an hour and I was sweating and rubbing my hands through my hair and the prof came by and said, is there a problem, Sean? And I went, fuck Sean, that's my name. <laughs> right? You see, you guys thought that sucked. You had to wait to the end. <laughs> You know something's coming, eh? You know it. You know they're gonna fuck with us again some way. Everybody here, even if you're not a conspiracy theorist, you gotta think something weird. We're all fucking waiting. The Americans have announced aliens have fucking arrived. They just kind of announce it. Like aliens would come all this way and just go hang out in America, right? <laughs> fuck the rest of us. Here they are. I'm into all of them, man. I love watching that shit. I'm banging a shapeshifter. Shape-shifting lizard. You see how quiet it got in here? You know why? Because some of them are here. I know, look at you, you all get fucking freaky. You know damn well there's shape-shifting fucking lizards in here. And I'm fucking one of them. Damn right. And you guys are going to think I'm weird, but I'll tell you what. Try fucking a shape-shifting lizard. Because halfway through, they can change to anything you fucking want. Is this too weird for you? <laughs> you don't believe in the old shape-shifting lizards? <laughs> what do you think then? Second coming of Christ? What do you think? What are they going to do next? Cut our energy? Leave us in the fucking dark? Take away our food supply by canceling all the farms? Wouldn't that be great? A fucking Hunger Games. No? <laughs> this is it. You guys think it's just, this is all going to be normal. <laughs> Holy fuck, it's going to get so weird. <laughs> it's going to be fucking awesome. And I'm just going to sit back stoned <laughs> and watch everyone freak out. Fuck me, it's really a nervous energy when you talk. <laughs> I've never in my life brought up shape-shifting lizards. I think this room is 80% lizard. I'm gonna release some flies and just see, see how you react. <laughs> I'm doing a, a show, I've actually got popular, I'm 57, it got popular on the internet, so I'm going back and touring Canada, but I'm coming back here in October, where I live, and doing a whole bunch of theater shows, so if you like this and you want to watch it for an hour and a half, come, it's called Smoking Funny, come and find me. Other than that, you guys were fucking awesome for an early show, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>